Hey everybody, it's Alex from Heavy New York. We are in the Champagne Room at Gramercy Theater, and we got round three with New Year's Day. This time we're here with Nikki Misery. Thank you for your time. Oh, thanks for having me, man. It's yeah. a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's good to see you since NAM. A lot has oh, happened right? since then. So much has happened since NAM. Although, like, time kind of seems like a second, but it's still, like, I know a lot of things have happened, and it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but Unbreakable has just come out. I know when I spoke with you and Ash at Nam that uh, you couldn't even mention what the title of the album was. Yes, that's right. And now we, and now I got to hear the album. Do you just want to give a rundown? Like, do you have like a conclusion on how the making of this record's been and how it's been so far with it? Now that it's a week old. Um, yeah, yeah, oddly enough, like like the, creating the record has been. I don't want to say the easiest process because anytime you make a record, like you delve into like the deepest depths of insanity, and like you still want to strangle everybody. But it was honestly. In that sense, like the easiest record we've ever done. Like these people want to do everything that we wanted to do and pull out the best of our ideas out. Unlike like others before who would just come up with their ideas and try to make us play to them. And uh, which made this so much better. And like we took our time, we got to sit with the songs and like obsess over it and really like grow with the song itself. So if we didn't like something, we can go back and change it rather than just have like, this is your time to write the album and that's it. You know, and it always sucks that way. But like, this was like our album, and this is like the first time I feel like this is like the real New Year's Day popping out. Because I've noticed that like there was a lot of different sounds on this record. There's poppier elements. There's more hard rock. There's straight up. I think I forget which song it was. It was like the first stir opening track, but there was like a breakdown utilized in there that like you'd almost think like Alex from Whitechapel collaborated. It's so dirty. It's so dirty, and I love playing it live. I remember like some of these songs like. I remember when Ash first showed me Shut Up, like complete, I was like, she was she was afraid to show it to me. She's like, I don't think you're gonna like it. Cause I always hate demos. I hate them. I have to hear it like complete, otherwise I, I have no like vision ahead of time. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. And when she showed me Shut Up, I was like, oh my God, we get to play this? She's like, you like it? I'm like, no, I love this song. You know, I was so excited for it. Cause it's something so different and out the box. And that's what I like. And as like an artist, you're supposed to push these boundaries and break the rules of these genres, you know? Like, fuck just being just a metal band. Fuck just being just a punk band. Fuck just being just a goth band. Like, make a good song a good song. That's what really matters, because good music is good music. Yeah, I feel like this record really opened up even a lot more doors, because like, what, you know, the first time I saw you was with Bless the Fall and Crown the Empire, but then I saw you with uh, Hailstorm and In This Moment, completely different yeah. uh, game. And now you're on this tour with Falling in Reverse, From Ashes to New and Ice Nine Kills. So it's fair to say that I think this record is going to allow you to tour with many different artists, right? I mean, I hope so, you know. Uh, the future holds what the future holds. I can only just be here to ride the ride. Yeah. Now, when making these songs, were you... Do you try to execute them live just as much, like as close to how it is on the album, or do you try to make the live experience a little bit different for your listeners? I definitely don't like to play anything exactly how the album's played. I always want like the live show to be the live show, and the album to be the album. If you want to listen to the album live, stay home and listen to it. But when you come to the live show, you're gonna have that extraness to it. Like we always like to add intros and outros and stuff like that, and just change up the songs a bit, cause like. Why would you pay that ticket just to like see the same thing that you could hear when you're at home? Yeah. You know, yeah, especially true. with all these sweaty, stinky people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think everybody's like that. We, yeah. we we have like the bridge between like that wet be uh, that wet rain smell and that Ooh. be. Uh, and your boy is rank right now. <laughs> now, um, another thing I've noticed with this record is not only there are many different sounds, but there's also many different vibes. I think a song like, uh, I thought Poltergeist had a little more of a melancholy yeah. effect to it, but then like I thought like Unbroken was very uh, triumphant, and then there were songs that are uh, more in your face. So is it fair to say that not only do you like to experiment with different sounds, but New Year's Day feels many different emotions as well? Well, absolutely. I mean, like when you're putting out an album, you can't just have one feeling the whole time, you know? Like the album's supposed to be a roller coaster ride. Similar to something like, like, like Pink Floyd you know you just have this whole ride you know and that's what that's what we want like take you through the, all the emotions but still be real now I've noticed just today in itself and I've noticed this all the times I've seen you guys you, uh, live you have a very dedicated fan base I mean the meet and greet today I mean put it this way I went to the convenience store next door this morning you know like 
eight hours before doors, and the line was already around the bank. No shit. So, like, it's fair to say that uh, I, when, you, when you hear a fan say how much your music has helped me or how much the music speaks to me, does that change your perspective on your own art? It does, absolutely. And at the same time, like, it's almost out of disbelief because, like, still I always think of myself as, like, this just a little punk kid from Santa Ana. And, and to think that I've made a difference on somebody else's life is still, like, humbling, you know? It's still grounding. And to think that we can still change people's views and perspective or, like, have some kind of, like, emotional impact with our music. I mean, because when you think about it, all we're doing is just hitting strings and making, like, different vibrations, you know? But... But if you feel it and you rock out to it, I mean, that's like the end goal as it is. So, I mean, if you feel something to it, like, I mean, that's a dream in itself. To me, that's success. It's not about making money, driving all the fancy cars. Fuck all these fucking poser rock stars who just show that shit off. You know, like, that's what it's really about. And uh, to me, like, I'm, uh, like I was talking to like, our, our, the main guy of our label. He's like, don't worry, you guys don't have to deal with this shit anymore. I'm like... Dude, there's still people rocking out to us. That's all I care about. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You know, I don't, I've never had money. I never had like a real place to live or anything. You know, I'm still like sleeping on like on, on couches and shit like that. But like, that's, that's the life. And this is what I, I choose to do to help people and just put music and just be an artist. Now, one thing I've noticed when seeing you guys live and listening to you, I think your uh, guitar work is actually phenomenal. Like, it ha it's very rhythm-driven, but there's a lot of melodies. So, in the guitar work in the studio, do you, like, lay down riffs and then be like, okay, I have to write this solo and this mode off of it? Or do you hear a rhythm first and write according to that? Is there an overlying melody that you have to focus on? It's, it's always so different. Because, like, honestly, like, with everything that we do, everything goes to Ash's vision. So it's trying to like realize what she's trying to say sonically and musically. And um, whether it's like a rhythm or a lead that starts off, like sometimes like Austin will play a lead. We're like, oh, that's super sick. How can we go around that? What key is that in? What about this? You know, we'll try to like work around that. So it really depends on the song or how shit goes. But everything's always like, it's, it's a wild card every time, every time. And I always think that's like the fun gamble of it, as much as the headache in itself. You mentioned it goes through Ash's vision, but like I'd imagine that everybody has like input as well. Like, could, could her vision ever open your mind to something and vice versa? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, we, like we have our influences and stuff like that, but we're still trying to realize. I guess in a sense, like the end game is what's best for the song, and what's best for the project, and whatever like the end goal is or the end game, Avengers. Uh, <laughs> so that's like the main thing. Like, if something's super sick and it adds in, it fits in perfectly. Yeah, we add it in. If it's super sick, but it doesn't really fit in, of course it doesn't work. Yeah. So it really depends on the song and like the style and what we're doing at the time. And I have uh, two more questions for you, if that's cool. Um, just on this tour, you've recruited uh, my good friend Dio Brito on drums. Yeah. And I loved him when he was playing drums for Westfield Massacre and gr phenomenal drummer. Did him joining the band, did you want him to just learn the songs and that, or did you want him to maybe bring a little bit of his own mix to the live presence? Uh, well, usually for the beginning, we want you to learn the songs, you know, that way you can play what this is and then once you start getting more comfortable with it, then add your own style, that way we can all add that to the show. Because if you start doing your own thing and we're sitting there like if Frankie's playing something that's to the rhythm of like the original song, it's not going to be right, you know? And Dio is a phenomenal drummer He's and all. Phenomenal drummer, he's awesome. And uh, just for, because, uh, you know, I interviewed New Year's Day three times now, so, like, you know, we can only go deep so many times. I'm going to ask one little fun question for the fans out there. What is the most painful spot you've ever gotten tattooed? Oh, my God, my stomach right here. Oh, you got the gangster style tattoo? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oddly enough, it was so funny because, like, when I was younger, I used to make fun of, like, yeah, I'm going to get Santa Ana tattooed on my stomach in Old English. And I had my boy, uh, my boy Danny, who works at uh, Sacred Anchor down in Anaheim, Garden Grove area. I walked by that. Yeah, yeah. He tattooed me like Santa Ana on my stomach because Santa Ana has been like such a hometown for me. Like, I'm from a place that's like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like, my family's from different states. I was born in a state where none of my family's from. And I grew up away from my entire family. So it's like, where, where do I have to call home? But Santa Ana, California, like really built me as the person who I am. That was my punk rock scene. That was my ghetto scene. That was my everything scene. And uh, so Danny Anchor tattooed that on me. And I remember being so much in pain that for like an hour, I just sat so tight. 
And then my stomach would start shaking. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry with the line work would have happened. But uh, I mean, he was such a great sport. And Dan Anker is an amazing tattoo artist. Oh, you know, he's fantastic. He's tattooed me, he's tattooed Ash Costello and plenty of other people. Like, he's a great talent. Sacred Anchor, Dan Anchor, follow them all. They're great people. You heard it. You heard, heard it from it. here. Right here, man. <laughs> And, you know, it's funny, kind of, you mentioned the Santa Ana because it was your punk scene, your ghetto scene. I guess that shows in your music, too, because it has so many different sounds there. I think I th your music is a Santa Ana soundtrack. Absolutely. And it's definitely in my energy, too, because, like, I grew up in a punk rock scene, a very, like, nihilistic kind of, like, atmosphere, especially growing up in Santa Ana where, like, you know, I mean, cops don't really help you out. Like, you know, you're your own minority, and, like, you're there to help yourself, and you have your community, and, like, that was very... It was hard, but it was awesome at the same time. Like growing up now and seeing where I'm at now, I wouldn't have it any different. So before I go, I'd like to thank you so much for your time. It's always great talking to you all. Oh, and all mine, man. Always welcome in the city. Yeah. Uh, I just know that you announced your headliner tour. Uh, that, and is there just anything else with the band that you'd like to promote? Don't. It, this is going to be uploaded by midnight, so don't make the same mistake of uh, remember when you announced the uh, Ash announced the Falling in Reverse tour before you were allowed to talk about it. Well, uh, we do have a Falling Reverse tour that we're currently on, and then we have a headliner. And then uh, in November, we're doing Europe and UK with Hailstorm and In This Moment. And so far, that's all I know. I know there's a bunch of festivals and shindigs happening in between. But I mean, you're talking to the guitar player, so I only know so much. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Hey, man. My pleasure. Everybody, Nikki Misery of New Year's Day, Unbreakable. Salute. It is out now. Pick up it. Pick it up if you haven't already. This is Alex from New York. We'll see you next time.